his his situation is very unique. And he's one of the, I mean, you know, sometimes when we get into the word of God, he's one of the ones that we like, wow, look at him. But look what happened to him in the end. That wasn't the end. That wasn't the end. But I, I don't want to, you know, I just want you to see something while we're reading. Because the Lord will open our eyes concerning Samson. I mean, you know, we'll be quick to judge and say, uh-uh, that wouldn't be me. But you never know how the Lord will use you in your situation for the glory of God. Yes, Lord. No weapon form. No weapon. Okay. Let us have prayer. Father, we thank you for your love, your kindness, Lord. We thank you for allowing us to go in your word. Uh, as we rehash about Samson, Lord, if there's anything that you want us to know, Lord, we ask you to bless each and every one of us to be able to hear what the Spirit has to say unto the church. Whatever the situation we're in right now, whatever circumstances that we find ourselves in, we're asking you to lead and guide us. Let us receive what you have in store for us. And if there's an opportunity that we can expound a little deeper, or if there's an area where I'm not sure, Lord, I'm quite sure that you can drop it in the Bible studies slash Sunday school session that somebody can be able to be used in this area. We love you, Lord, for what you're about to do this day. In Jesus' name, we pray. Let every heart say amen. Amen. Okay. All right, a little bit about Samson, you know, some things that we have uh, probably touched on. We've probably forgotten about it. And, you know, your pastor forgets a lot of things, too. And, you know, we we, we read and we study and we, we ask the Lord to, to reveal things to us. And then when at the appointed time, the Lord will bring it back to our remembrance. All right. Now, if we look at uh, Samson's before he was born, his mother was barren. And Ananias, is it Ananias or? Hannah, um, she was barren, no children. Um, I mean, we can go on and on. Sarai, she was barren, no children. Uh, there's many areas in the word of God that we can find that those who were, uh, when I say handpicked or, or the angel, angel came to them, uh, speak to them, said that you're going to do this. Mary, I mean, you know, young woman, virgin, uh, she was highly favored. Um, and, and, you know, to make it seem like she was an angel that came from heaven. No, uh, Mary was highly favored. Okay. So the point I'm making here is the determination of what God's plan is, it's going to work. Um, Mo, uh, Samson, uh, when the Lord I spoke to uh, Mona, if I'm not, Mo, Mo, Manho, Manoa, okay. Wait, I'm sorry. Okay, that's the man. His name was Manoa. And if you really realize, the genealogy always went through the man. But I'm not going to get into that right now. Um, but it was always a reference to a man in the name of Jesus. Um, his wife was barren. And the angel visitor spoke to her, said, uh, you can turn to um, Judges 13 chapter. You can start at the third verse. And I'll read down to the fifth and then we'll just keep going on because some of this we already went through. And it might come back to your attention, everyone that's on here. And for those who are new, I'll try to, you know, give you the scriptures so you can go back and search it out for yourself. OK, uh, Judges, the 13th chapter, third verse says, and the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, behold, now thou art barren and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. OK, fourth verse says, now, therefore, beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine nor strong drink and eat not any unclean thing. 
chapter first says, For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come upon his head, for the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hands of the Philistines. So, uh, just, I mean, no, I already gave it out, but it is the book of Judges. Samson, when he would be born, he would be a he would be a judge. Okay. All right. Nazarite, he was set aside. And in the, in the three things that she was not supposed to do the whole time she was bringing him forth, as you see in that third, in that fourth verse, it says, drink no wine, nor strong drink, and eat no unclean thing. Okay? No unclean thing. So that requirement set Samson aside. All right. Now, the title that he will hold was he was going to be a judge. All right. Now, many of us, you know, we read Samson and the things that he did here. And we're trying to figure out, well, how can he judge? And he's doing a lot of things that we perceive as out of character. Uh, okay, look, I, I preached on this Sunday, but still, I'm bringing up Trump. And I didn't know that you have to be put in jail, serve time for not being considered to be a president of the United States. But I see how they worked it out. Whereas, no, he ain't served no time. He was convicted. So that's not stopping him from assuming the position of the president. But that's, that's we're not dealing with that today in Jesus' name. Okay. Now, him being separated. So as you read in the word of God, in different times, God would move upon Samson. But there were some areas you and I can question. Now, let me ask y'all a question for those who do read. And I'm not saying for those who don't read or for those who do know Samson and for those who don't know Samson. I want to ask y'all a question while we're going on uh, through this. What was the first thing that Samson did? that brought a question up to your mind. You can, you can go to your word. I want you to go to the Bible if you don't know exactly, but I'm quite sure many of us on here could say, uh, I know one thing Samson did that doesn't seem like it lined up to, the, to his upbringing. Can I, get, can I get somebody to unmute themselves and talk to me a little bit? Anybody? Any volunteer? Because, I, I mean, looking at Samson's situation, I, I, there's, I'm quite sure there's a lot of things in there that got you all's attention and say, wow. One thing I see Samson do is this, or did, is this. Okay? Anybody? Anybody. If not, I could I can talk. I, I I'll take you to the scriptures. We can we can search these things out. Because it's it could I mean it's considered a contract or it's going against the, the principles that they were raised in and what was going on in their life. What do you all see that Sansa did that has a given you a question mark about his character? Anybody. Right. Let's go to the 14th chapter of Judges. And it says, first verse. First verse. 
I'll read down a little bit. It says, and Samson went to Tamatha and saw a woman of uh, Tamathan. Oh, I'm sorry, Tamathan of the daughters of the Philistine. Okay, now that like, okay, bro, you getting ready to get involved with the enemy. But how how he's supposed to be delivering them from us. Because we're not looking at what we did, but we're looking at the actions that you're doing. Let me let me let me read some more. Second verse says, and he came up and told his father and his mother and said, I have seen a woman of Tamathan, if I'm saying this wrong, y'all forgive me, of the daughters of the Philistines. Now therefore get her for me to wives. Back then, they had a, a prearranged. Uh, like Joseph, Mary, uh, pre-reigned. Uh, back then, they handpicked your husband and your wife for you. It wasn't it, like, not like now. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Lord. Have mercy. Guess what? I, I found somebody. You, you, you ain't seven, you're just 17 years old, haven't been anywhere. But see, I, there's something I'm going to read in here that's gonna make a lot of difference in this choice, okay? Third verse says, then his father and his mother said unto him, is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren or among all my people that thou goest to take a wife of an uncircumcised Philistine, the enemy? I mean, we've been fighting them for years, still fighting, but anyway. And Samson said unto his father, get her for me, for she pleases me well. I got to use the King James Version. I mean, the new King James Version in that last one. He says, but Samson told his father, get her for me. She looks good to me. Now, how many of us fall in that line? Huh? Uh, the eyeballs follow. I mean, should I say it like that? Or should I say it like this? You see something, it looks good. Don't know what's inside. Don't know what's brokenness. Don't know traumatized. Don't know, but it looks good. Man does the outward appearance. But God knows the heart. Okay? Now, now I, the point that I'm still saying earlier, here's where it brings home. The fourth verse says, but his father and his mother knew not that it was of the Lord. Let me pause there. And I want you all to see something. Why would the Lord allow Samson to desire the enemy in this situation? If he's a judge and he was supposed to, he, he is supposed to deliver his people from the Philistine, the enemy, okay? So, and let me finish that scripture. And Samson said unto his father, get her for me, for me, for she pleases me well. But his father and mother knew not that it was of the Lord that he saw an occasion Okay, let me read the King James Version. His father and mother didn't realize the law was at work in this, creating an opportunity to work against the Philistines who ruled over Israel at that time. So, the Lord is in this. But do you know the Lord don't open everybody's eyes? And then, especially when the Lord is using you in areas where nobody can understand and they question you. But his mother and father, rightly so, because when they came out of Egypt and when they went into the promised land, the Lord told them not to give your sons and daughters in marriage unto 
the enemy or those who not serve the true and living God. You are supposed to show them, hallelujah, in your actions. But if you read, if, I mean, you know, I wish, okay, you can go back and read the first chapter, I mean, the 13th chapter where it says, they, the Israelites committed evil in the sight of the Lord. That's when the Philistines were able to get the dominance over them. Okay. Every judge was supposed to deliver them out of the hands of the Philistines. But here it is, the 13th chapter, they write back, or the 14th chapter, they're, they're over 40 years, they're still in captivity because of their disobedience. But the Lord is raising up somebody, Samson, to, to deliver them out of the hands of the end. But the way the Lord is doing it, you and I, and I'm quite sure, I, I mean, I question this my own self. This, Lord, why would you allow him to see and want to marry the enemy? Okay, let, let's move on a little bit. But I still want y'all to see something. The Lord will still use you Many are called and few are chosen. My God, you don't know what that person went through or is going through in order to be used by God. Samson, praise God, his whole situation, God was using him in a way that you and I cannot see. Sometimes the Lord will not allow you to see what he's doing in the midst of his people. Because we're so quick to judge. Now. Okay. I, one area where the anointing of God moved. Uh, the, they use the word in here as. Go to that sixth verse. Um, it says. And the spirit of the Lord. Came mightily upon him. And he rent him as he would have rent a kid. Okay. Let's, I'm going to read the King James Version. At that moment, the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon him, and he ripped the lion's jaws apart with his bare hands. He did it as easily as if it were a young goat, but he didn't tell his mother and father about it. Okay, so we're seeing how the Lord will come upon a person. I mean, well, this day is the Holy Ghost is inside. Back in the Old Testament, it rested on. Okay. The point that's being made here is the fact that even the Lord was in his relationship with this woman as a Philistine. The Lord was using him to deliver the people. Now, we would look at this and say, I don't understand it. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. So as we see in reading the scriptures, the Lord was in this, using Samson because what? He was set aside. As we can see here, his mother didn't drink anything. She didn't touch no un unclean thing. So up until this point, we see that Samson, Sam, Samson followed the same footsteps. How many here know that your children watch you? How many here know that they see things? They, they I mean, look, one of my grandsons, <laughs> He repeats some of the things I say across the pulpit. D do you know they're watching you? How do you expect for them to learn? Holy Ghost, thank you. How many of us pray with our children? How many, how many of us pray with our nephews and nieces? How many of us uh, uh, pass down, when I say traditional things, yeah, uh, just like sitting down at the table eating breakfast. Before you start diving in, wait a minute. We need to pray over this food. 
Because in my finite mind, ain't no telling what they did with it. I mean, I don't know if y'all had food poisoning, but I, I had it, didn't like it. I mean, you got to pray. Everybody ain't your friend. Lord, thank you. So we see that. Hallelujah. I know I, I know I got some witnesses out there. Lady Crothers, I hear you. I mean, sometimes when you do get sick like that, you be like, Lord, have mercy. You never know. Now, do you remember that um, Samson's mother was not supposed to? Now, here's a judge. He's a judge. Samson's mother was not supposed to touch any unclean thing. Let's go to uh, Judges 14. Okay. Let's go to the eighth verse. It says, and after a time he returned to take her and he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion. And behold, there was a swarm of bees and honey in the carcass of a lion. Now this lion's dead. It's unclean. So Samson should know better. Why? He's the judge. He's a Nazareth. He should know better. Should have left it alone. All right. Ninth verse says what? I'm going to read the New King James Version. It said he scooped some of the honey into his hands and he ate it along the way. He also gave some to his father and his mother. They ate it. But he didn't tell them that he had taken the honey from the carcass of the lion. <laughs> oh, so what did Samson do, everybody? Did he break one of the requirements? What he wasn't supposed to do? Looking at this, the, the lion was dead. But he scooped the honey out of a dead carcass. So he had to touch it. And you and I will sit there and say that he was wrong. And he also gave it to his mother and his father. So think about it for a few minutes. Who was wrong here? Huh? I mean, as we're sitting here, he wasn't supposed to. That was one of the requirements for his mother. And I'm quite sure she taught that to her son. Matter of fact, that's one of the law. The unclean thing. No, we're not supposed to handle it. Touch it. Dead animals? No. No, sir. Now, him being a judge? Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, it looked like he set him up. Yeah, but here's another thing, too. Sister Dolores and all those who's thinking, praise God. Do you know a lot of times that a lot of things people do, they don't tell you the whole truth? They withhold a lot of stuff? Do you know a half truth is still a lie? Oh, can I? <laughs> the Lord just dropped this in my spirit. I love you. Don't know what love is. Don't even love your own self. How can I love you and I don't even understand what love is? You read the word of God. Yes, it is. Submission is too. Omission is a lot. Submission is also. I'm not telling you everything. But guess what? Galatians, the sixth chapter. Ah. I can't remember exactly where it is, but it's in that sixth chapter where it says, be not deceived, God is not mocked, whatsoever a man, what? So, that shall he also read. But mind you, 
And I want y'all to, I mean, this is where a, a lot of areas we have to pray. We do. We have to pray, Lord, let my action speak for me. Oh, then you hear people, you hear people say, action speak louder than words. So Samson, the Lord is using him in the opportunity to come against the Philistine. Now, mind you, I told you that he's a judge, okay? And I see how this is all playing out because I want y'all, when you read this chapter, you'll find out how the Lord is using him. He put out a, he put out a riddle, okay? Same chapter. 14th verse. Well, I, should I go back up? Okay. 14th verse, 14th chapter, it says, And he said unto them, Out of the eater came forth meat, and out of the strong came forth sweetness. And they could not in three days expound the riddle. Now he's a judge. Now he put a riddle out to them. They can't figure it out. So guess what they did? All right. All right. On the seventh day, Samson, they went to Samson's wife. 15th verse. Entice our husband. I've dropped down a little bit. That he may declare unto us the riddle. Least we burn thee and thy father's house with fire. Have ye called us to take that we have? Is it not so? So or in other words, uh, King James, New King James Version says on the fourth day, it said unto Samson's wife, entice your husband and explain the riddle to us, or we will burn down your father's house with you in it. Did you invite us to this party just to make us poor? Okay? Because there was a banquet going on. All right? So here's this man, man of God, Put a riddle on him, but because the the Lord had it so that he married one of their, you know, their daughters, they threatened his wife. So guess what? Samson's wife wept before him. Uh, Sixteen verb. I'm reading the King New King New King James version. So Samson's wife came to him in tears and said, you don't love me. Oh, good God am I. I got to take my glasses off on this one. Okay, man of God, he's a judge. He puts a riddle out there. I mean, hey, if you, if, if you figure it out, I'll give you. If you can't figure it out, you got to give me. But his wife come. Okay. Let me put my glasses on because I can't see. It says... His wife came to him in tears. You don't love me. You hate me. You have given my people a riddle, but you haven't told me the answer. I haven't even given the answer to my, this is how Samson answered, to my father or mother, he replied, why should I tell you? I like that. If I didn't tell my own <laughs> mother and father, why should I tell you? But we married. When she came to him, she uses her emotion that you don't love me. You don't love me. <laughs> so she cried out whenever she was with him and kept it up for the rest of the celebration. At last, on the seventh day, he told her to answer because she was tormenting him with her nagging. Then she explained the riddle to the young men. So... Here's the thing that I, I <laughs> some of y'all, please help me. All right. When it doesn't seem like you don't get your way, here, he wasn't telling her, but she nagged him or she wore him out. That's something to think about. He's a judge, he put out a riddle why would he tell her to answer, knowing that that's her people? But they threaten her by saying, we'll burn down your house with you in it. Why would you 
bring him here to make us poor. So, I mean, for God I live and for God I'll die. But the Lord is still telling me in my spiritual man that I am still in control. I allowed you to get in this occasion to deliver my people. Now, the way the Lord does it, it's not the way that we are looking at it because we would never understand the things that God has for his people and how he's going to deliver you out of your situation. So the it seemed like that he was defeated in the sense of giving her the answer. But, I mean, you could still read further down, whereas after um, he gave the answer, that in that 19th verse, I'll read the, I mean, yeah, the 19th verse, okay, the 18th verse, he gave the, the answer, or she gave the answer to them, to her, and then he gave it, she gave it to them, and it says, so before sunset of the seventh day, the men of the town came to Samson with their answer. What is sweeter than honey? What is stronger than a lion? Samson replied, if you have been plowed with my heifer, you wouldn't have solved the riddle. So think about it. Samson, what are you, what are you saying? Do we need to really read that? to understand what he answered them when they came with the answer. So in other words, if you didn't talk to my wife, you wouldn't have never got the answer. So I, you have to be, but I, I'm, I still want y'all to see something. The Lord allowed this to happen so he can use Samson to deliver the Israelites out of the hands of the Philistines, sleeping with the enemy. I know y'all saw that movie. But the Lord will use ways of getting your attention. Sense and contrast had a lot to do with him Delivering the Philistine, it might not be the way that you perceive it to be, but God still used Samson. And many of us said, oh, yeah, well, he went in lot with them. And uh, I mean, he had pleasure with them. And I mean, you know, there's a lot of times when the Lord allowed us to go places that we don't really want to go. But then when he bring us out, we can really give God the glory for that because you can't tell it. Let me tell it. The Lord will use you. Oh, oh God. Okay. I'm trying to stay on the point where it's God will use anybody. Who am I to judge? Many of us look at Samson and say he was out of order. He was out of line. But still remember what we read early. Mother, father didn't know what was going on, but God was in the plane. Many of us, we, we, we get caught up in certain situations and we, my God, 10, 12, 15, 20 years locked up, uh, suffering, going through an, I mean, agonizing situation. Praise God. And I mean, our own friends, they, they scandalize our name. Uh, just so they, uh, they call them snitches. Just so they don't go to jail, they'll throw you under the bus. But if God be for you, he is more than the world against you. My God. So, the point that I, 
I see in just so I know. Oh, can I hear you, sister, sister, sister Jessica? So you want, huh? I said sorry, my phone was unmuted. <laughs> All right, <laughs> thank God for you, uh, and happy birthday to you anyway. So, as we are walking with the Lord, there are ways, just like Samson, the Lord will use us. And it's very unusual, unorthodox. It don't make sense to us. We, I mean, we'll sit on the, we'll sit on the wayside or on the sidelines that I wouldn't do it. You don't know what you would do when you are in a heated situation or a life-threatening situation. You don't know. Hallelujah. The Lord can use you under the anointing. The spirit of God will move in you and you can sing like an angel. You deliver people left and right. People hear, oh my God. They say, oh, oh my God. They can't, listen, this is where you say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, all glory belongs to you. Sense the situation, when you read it, praise God, you will see that. The Lord moved up on him mightily more than once. But we all looking at the negative. When I said the bad side. Okay, praise God. What happened now? Oh, do we want to? Yeah, we're going to talk about um, some, some of the females that are here today. Amen. We don't escape this. We fall into these traps too. Okay. All right. Now he, the Lord moved upon him. He took a jawbone of a uh, of an ass, and he killed over a thousand Philistines. He burnt up their crops. They was mad at him. Okay. So. They're, they can't handle him. They don't know what to do with him. He, he, he was a thorn in their side. Okay? 15 and 15. Judges 15 and 15. And he found the new jawbone of an ass and put forth his hands and took it and slew a thousand men therein. And Samson 16 verse says, and Samson said, with the jawbone of an ass, heaps upon heap, with the jaw of an ass, have I slain a thousand men. The Lord will use you. Under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. Okay? All right, let's go to Judges the 16. Many of us said this is his demise. All right. The lust of the eye and the lust of the flesh. Okay. You got to understand, you have to read that word about the lust. You have to. Lust. I want y'all to look that up. For your own preference. What that word means. Lust. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to talk about the doors, but they, they weren't small, and he had to go up a year. Okay. Let's go to Judges 16 and 4. Now, I'm going to go to, I'm going to read the King James Version, New King James Version. It says, sometime later, Samson fell in love with a woman named Delilah, who lived in the valley of Tarek. The rulers of the Philistines went to her and said, entice Samson to tell him, to tell you what makes him so strong and how he can overpower and tie up securely. Then each of us will give you 1,100 pieces of silver. So Delilah said to Samson, please tell me what makes you so strong and what it is and what it would take to tie you up Secure. Samson. Now, many of us say, well, he lied to her. Still, the Lord is in this, saints. 
the, the Lord is still using you in the midst of the enemy. David said, thou prepares the table in front of me in the presence of my enemies. I mean, the Lord will still allow you to operate right in the midst of those who are criticizing you, saying everything. I mean, those who are close to you not always understanding what God is doing in your life. So here, okay, he fell in love with her. All right. So it says, seven verse, if I tie it up with seven new bowstrings that have not yet been dried, I will become weak as anyone else. Eight verse, so the Philistine rulers brought Delilah seven new bowstrings and she tied up. This will crack me up. She, they bring it to her and she's tying them up. Come on, Lord, help me. She had hidden some of the men in one of the inner chamber rooms of her house and cried out, Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. But Samson snapped the bowstrings as a piece of string snapped when it was burned by a fire. So the secret of his strength was not discovered. Ten first. Afterward, Delilah said unto him, You have, you've been making fun of me and telling me lie. Okay? Now please tell me how you could be tied up secure. 11th verse, Samson replied, if I were tied up with a brand new rope, with brand new ropes that have never been used, I become as weak as anyone else. So Delilah took new ropes and tied him up with them the men were hiding in, oh, I, I can sense and not know this, but still, the Lord is still in charge, okay? I've got to hear this. He know the ways that we take. He know what direction we're going, but he's still in charge, okay? In the upper room, uh, okay, going back. So Delilah, New ropes tied him up with them. The men were hiding in the inner room as before. And again, Delilah cried out, Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. But again, Samson snapped the ropes from his arms as if they were thread. Then Delilah said, you've been making fun of me and telling me lies. Now tell me how you can be tied up securely. Samson replied, if you were to weave the seven braids of my hair into a fabric of your loom and tighten it with the loom shuttle, I will become as weak as anyone else. Kryptonite. She, so while he slept, Delilah wove the seven braids of his hair into the fabric. Then she tightened it with the loom shuttle. And again, she cried out, Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. But Samson woke up, pulled back the loom shuttle, and yanked his hair away from the loom and the fabric. Now, 15 verse, then Delilah howled. Now she want to be rich. Do, do, do you know, <laughs> fool is money, shall uh, uh, mm, There's a lot of scriptures dealing with money. But her whole motive was getting paid. Fifteen verse. Then Delilah pouted. How can you tell me I love you when you don't share your secrets with me? You have made fun of me three times. In, in, no, three times now. And you still haven't told me what makes you strong, so strong. 16th verse, maybe this will sink in like it's sunk into me. She tormented him with her nagging. Didn't Samson's first wife do the same thing about solving that riddle? Nagging. That's another word I want y'all to look up. Nagging. Day after day until he was sick 
to death of it. Finally, Samson shared his secret with her. My hair has never been cut. He confessed. Oh, God. Come back. I'm sorry. Confess. For I was dedicated to God as a Nazareth from birth. If my head were shaved, my strength would leave me. And I would become as weak as anyone else. 18th verse. Now, all the other times, she didn't realize this. But the 18th verse, after he she wore him out, nagging, he was sick unto death. Del Delilah realized he had finally told her the truth. So she sent for the Philistine rulers, come back one more time. She said, for he has finally told me his secret. So the Philistine rulers returned with the money in their hand. Delilah lulled him asleep on, with his head on her lap. Then she called the men to shave off the seven locks of his hair. In this way, she began to bring him down and his strength left him. Now I'm going to read the King James Version. It says, and she began, she made him sleep upon her knee and he called for a man and she caused him to shave off his seven locks of his head and she began to afflict him and his strength went from him. Now I'm going back to the King James Version. 20th verse says, then she cried out, Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. He woke up, he thought, I will do as before and shake myself free. But he didn't realize the Lord had left him. So the Philistines captured him, gouged out his eyes, and they took him to Gaza, where he was bound and with broad chains and forced to grind grain in the prison. 22nd verse makes everybody realize the end of the matter is not as the beginning. The 22nd verse says, but before long, his hair began to grow back. Now, mind you, <laughs> brother man knew where his strength is, but they forgot over the course of time. Because if they remembered, they would have kept shaving his head. But they thought they had victory shaving his hair the first time. But you got to realize in your reading, it symbolized strength that God was with him because he was a Nazareth. He still held on to his faith. He still held on to what God has given him with the authority. Now, I'm just going back down to the, to the end where it says, Samson wanted his two eyes to be avenged. Twenty-eight verse says, then Samson prayed to the Lord, sovereign Lord, remember me again. Oh, God, please strengthen me just one more time. With one blow, let me pay back the Philistines for the loss of my two eyes. Then Samson put his hands on the two center pillars that held up the temple, pushed against them with both hands. 30th verse, he prayed. He asked for permission. Let me die with the Philistines. And the temple crashed down upon the on the Philistines ruler and all the people. So he killed more people when he died than he had during his entire lifetime. Now, some of you all might pick up on this. Some of you might not. No man takes my life. Got the same power to lay it down. I have the same power to pick it up again. When Christ gave his life as that perfect sacrifice, 
more people got sick. More people received the gift. More people received the gift of the Holy Ghost. It's speeding for me to go away. If I stay here, the comforter can't come. But I'm going to give my life. I mean, this is awesome. The scribes and Philistines, they didn't like Jesus. The Philistines, um, I'm sorry, the, the scribes and the Pharisees, they didn't like Jesus. The Herodians and the judges, they didn't like Jesus. Samson, they couldn't do nothing with him. They thought they had him. Uh, but they thought they had Jesus too. But when they pissed him in the side, both blood and water came out. Samson prayed, Lord, take my life. More people died than anything than he did in his whole lifetime. So we may look at Samson as, oh, he, but his eyes got him in trouble. There's a lot here that can be unpacked. His eyes got him in trouble. But when he lost his eyes, he was he refocused. My God. I, I, I wish I had more time with this, but I thank God for you all. I really do. If there's anything else that you all want to really get, I mean, dig into. Text your pastor, and we'll go to work with you. I pray that you all got something out of this. Because everybody look at Samson differently because of how the Lord used him. But when the Lord has a calling on your life, it doesn't matter where you go, what you do, what's being done. God's going to get glory in your life. Hallelujah. Thank God for you all spending... Uh, an hour of your day on this Bible study slash Sunday school. Because Samson was a he was a judge, but we're look, we're looking at all the stuff that he did wrong. But still the Lord used him. We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yes, the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. But we just thank God we got the opportunity to say, Lord, I appreciate you. I'm sorry for what I've done wrong. But I thank you for giving me this day to get it right. In the name of Jesus. I know people looking at us and stating that you can't be saved doing this, doing that. But to God be the glory. Songwriter says, I've been running for Jesus a long time. I'm not tired yet. So let me encourage everybody, no matter what your enemy is saying, no matter what your haters are saying, praise God. It's always an opportunity for you to get it right. Hallelujah. Samson, and you know, and I'll say this. David said, without leave my soul. In hell. But let me tell you something. When Jesus, three days and three nights, <laughs> come on. He went and preached the gospel because under the law, nobody could be saved. I didn't come to destroy the law, but I came to fulfill it. And I'm here now to proclaim because I am what you're looking for. I am the Messiah. Hallelujah. So in these days, in these last and evil days, those, those of us got the Holy Ghost, praise God, we have an opportunity. Even though we think we failed, God's still using us in our shortcomings. But we thank God that we're able to say, Lord, thank you. Give me another chance, Lord. I'm sorry. I made a mistake. Hey, God, thank you, Lord Jesus. And I praise you for it, Lord. Love you all. Thank God for you. Not going to worry your patience no much. Uh, anybody have any announcements? I do believe Lady Carruthers. 
Yes. Yes. You, you want to tell them Sunday and for those who want to come? Um, it's at um, Trenton Church. I have to speak, but because of the conflict of time, um, I, we I didn't uh, we didn't announce it. Oh, okay. All right. All right. We just thank God for how the Lord is doing what He's doing. We love you all. Thank God for you all. Bless each and we we're praying for each and every one of you. Thank God for all that was happening today. We give God the glory and we appreciate everything that he's doing right in the midst of his people. We love you all. The Lord spare our lives. We look forward to seeing you on Sunday in the mighty name of Jesus. And we're looking for the Lord to have his way. Our heart, all, our heart, our, all hearts and minds clear at this time. All right. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for all that has been said and done. We thank you for how you blessed us beyond measure. We want you to have your way, Lord. Use us as you see fit. As we continue to surrender, oh God, we ask you, oh God, to bless your people as long as you can. Let your gifts be activated. Lord, let us be used by you because what you've given us, we return to you to teach us and show us how to use us in the mighty name of Jesus that you get the glory that's all being said and done. This we ask in Jesus' precious name. Let every heart say amen. God bless you. We love you. And have a blessed day.